few days ago, a new interview from Neymar came out and nobody expected to hear him say what he did. Neymar, at the age of 29, is considering retirement. First of all, one thing needs to be said. As any subject of gossip, the truth ends up being distorted. Neymar did not even mention the word retirement. He simply said that the 2022 World Cup in Qatar will surely be the last of his career. Still, it sets the precedent that the end is near for Neymar. International retirement frequently comes only a few seasons before the end of a player's career, and if you look at the rest of the interview, one thing becomes clear. Neymar has had one hell of a journey, and he is tired. After all, much has happened so far, and the world has failed to see the big picture. Today, I'm gonna try to uncover all of it for you. Even though he never really mentions retirement, he does end up saying that he doesn't think he will have the mental capacity to go on with football for much longer. It's easy to hear something like that and brush it off as petulance. What else does Neymar need? He makes nearly 100 million a year just by playing the sport he loves. But does he? Does Neymar still love football? I think the answer to that is much deeper than just a yes or a no, so for once let's try to empathize with it. Just by looking at how he plays, you get the sense that he does. He provides the exuberance and childish joy that Brazilian players have always been associated with. Every celebration makes it seem like he is living the dream, but lately, that hasn't been the case. Neymar often looks off, unlike himself, and this interview served only to confirm much of what has been said since the beginning of the year, but here comes the plot twist. This interview was actually recorded in 2019, which just happens to be the year where his performances arguably started declining. Not that this is representative of the whole picture, but it was also the last year where he managed to break the 20 goal barrier, which led me to notice another interesting coincidence, let's call it that for now. This isn't the first time that Neymar's lack of motivation made worldwide news. Back in 2017, the year he left Barcelona saying he felt he needed to move away from the shadow of greats like Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez in order to write his own story, he also failed to break the 20 goal barrier. With a precedent like this, you might see how it is maybe just a bit more than a coincidence. Watching this whole interview reminded me of something which happened just a few weeks ago. As PSG played Leon, Lucas Paqueta attempted a rainbow flick in the last minutes of the match and for some reason, he was booked. Some say it was for trapping the ball, but many believed it happened for unsportsmanlike conduct, as showboating is starting to be considered illegal by many referees, and one person who did not like what he saw at all was Neymar, who took to social media to tell the world that beautiful football is dying and that he has also been booked for the same reason before. Neymar has frequently been named as the last Joga Bonito player. A Brazilian term for players who believe entertainment in football is at the very least as important as efficiency. So it's no wonder he's disappointed to see football, rejecting everything that made him fall in love with a sport in the first place. To further hurt him, there's also one thing that I think ties in with this topic. Neymar has been injured 21 times since the start of the 2018-2019 season, so it ends up being sort of a what came first, the chicken or the egg type of story. Did Neymar begin underperforming because of the injuries which led him to begin feeling unmotivated, or did he begin feeling unmotivated because of the injuries which led him to underperforming? It's hard to be sure, but you know one thing I'm sure about? Joga Bonito players not only love, but need the spotlight, and every time he got injured, he slipped a little bit further into the background as Mbappé slowly became the image for the club. But here comes something, which might seem like a paradox, but maybe it hits the nail right in the head. There is comfort to being in the background. Neymar is easily one of the most criticized players of all time. There's something about him that led him to a level of scrutiny that is damn near unprecedented, and maybe Neymar is tired of that. One thing that leads me to believe in this is how he has reacted to Messi's arrival. If once Neymar seemed desperate to get out of his shadow, he now seems to find comfort in the familiar face of his old friend. There has been a shift in his mindset, but as he lost his hunger, I can't say. But once again, this whole deal led me to make a few connections, as I wondered if Neymar was unmotivated by his lack of space in the spotlight, or maybe unmotivated by the pressure that stems from being on it. I recalled something he said earlier in the interview. When talking about his first ever World Cup, you could see through what he said that he was well aware of this duality in his life. If in one sentence he mentioned that it was his dream to be the star of a World Cup, 
In the next one, he would say it was the worst moment of his life, agreeing when the interviewer said he probably wouldn't wish it upon his worst enemy. You see, that World Cup came in 2014, after his first season in Barcelona, and if in Spain he could find comfort in the shadow of other players, for Brazil, he was the main man. Neymar felt so much pressure to perform that when tragedy hit, he even tried to hide it from everyone else. If you mention Brazil's World Cup campaign in 2014, everyone instantly thinks of the 7-1 loss to Germany, but everyone forgets what happened in a previous match. Maybe because Neymar himself made sure to hide the true extent of what happened from everyone else. Neymar was fouled in the 88th minute of the match against Colombia, and as he fell to the ground he let out scream after scream. Marcelo came to help him, trying to get him to stand up and he just fell back to the ground. Neymar couldn't move his legs. He was carried off the pitch and taken to the infirmary. Instantly, worry was felt from the doctor, so far unsure of the extent of the injury. Against Neymar's wishes, the other players were alerted of his state, and as he was taken to the ambulance, in his own words, many came up to him with red eyes. It looked as if they had been crying. Neymar was not just out of the World Cup, he was soon informed that his state was very serious, and if the blow had come just two centimeters to the side, he would have never been able to walk again. Neymar definitely succeeded in keeping this story from the press. I, for one, had no idea of its extent up till now. No wonder the Brazilian side looked so broken mentally that day against Germany. Hey, I got something to show you. Nowadays everyone needs a website, and it's one hell of a task to get one, but that's where Squarespace comes in. They simplify the process, you pick whatever you like through an easy, user-friendly interface and a website seemingly magically appears in front of you. No matter what kind you need, it's just a matter of a few clicks before it's something you're proud of and want to show around, so might as well give it a try. Head to squarespace.com slash dailydoseoffootball to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain using code DAILYDOSEOFFOOTBALL. So yeah, back to the video. Even after all of that, Neymar still managed to somehow be at fault for what happened in the eyes of some people. In the age of social media, brash, half-baked ideas tend to get a lot of traction after all, and we're all guilty of it. For one, just think about it, his next World Cup would be even worse. You see, after something like that, Neymar was rightfully worried about his future. It surely was a traumatic experience to be so close to having everything taken away from you. So Neymar became more and more cautious on the pitch as injuries became more and more frequent. And after a while, he was being labeled as a no-good diver who just wants to defraud his way to victory. But give it a second to think. Every time one of the Joga Bonito ambassadors comes out to speak about football, they always say that the sport is becoming more and more physical and tough. That it's becoming impossible to play that way without facing the impending doom of injury. Maybe Neymar's diving antics were just action and reaction, he had to do something to protect himself, he isn't just a puppet running around for our amusement, he feels the pain of every tackle and maybe that was the only way to protect himself. Even the great Pelé retired from international football because he was tired of feeling like the referees didn't care for his safety. But yeah, I realize I'm being way too lenient and that if in fact he cares so much about the beauty of the game, there's nothing more ugly than rolling around trying to fake getting fouled. That's why people hate it so much. The 2018 World Cup showcased it perfectly. Somehow, in the middle of the greatest sporting event the world has to offer, his diving managed to be one of the most talked about subjects. Social media was flooded with posts slandering him in all kinds of ways. It only took a few clicks for Neymar to see that the entire world perceived him as nothing more than a brat. As someone who has kind of an audience, every little comment gets to me. I used to think YouTubers were being too sensitive when they said stuff like this, but now I get it. No matter if it's someone saying my accent is awful or that I should stop making videos, it gets to me. It makes me feel like all the work I've put into this goes by unseen. The negative comments are always the ones which weigh the most. I can't imagine how Neymar felt seeing the entire internet against him. After much hypothesizing, it's time to look at the hard numbers. Neymar is 29, sure, but by the next World Cup he will be 30 years old, meaning that if it were not to be his last, he would have to wait 4 years to play the next one, turning 34 by the time he got the next chance. This seems like a very reasonable time to retire. Our perception of when a player should retire has been distorted by the likes of Sergio Ramos, Ibrahimovic, Modric and Thiago Silva who are playing at the highest level well into their 30s. Well, 
40s for Ibra, but let's not even mention that. In reality, many players have retired from international football in their early 30s, especially in Brazil. Take Ronaldinho as an example. After all, his career and Neymar's are very similar in many ways. Ronaldinho played his last World Cup match at the age of 26. And yes, you were that completely right, 26. And that was also his last match in any kind of final stage of an international tournament. Even his last qualifying match came at the age of 29. And he isn't the only one. Romário was 28, Rivaldo was 30, and even players like Pelé and Ronaldo played their last World Cup matches at the age of 29. And that didn't stop them from being some of the all-time greatest players of the competition. But that's where this really stems from, Neymar's legacy. When Ronaldinho retired in 2006, he had to his name a World Cup, a Confederations Cup, a Copa America and an Under-17 World Cup. There is no way to deny Ronaldinho had conquered the world. He has even been named its best player on two different occasions, while Neymar seems like the eternal prodigy that never came to be. Which sounds odd to say, he has literally scored close to 400 goals over his career. Well. In my personal opinion, this discrepancy comes from one simple thing. Neymar was supposed to have taken over after Messi faded away, but the year he arrived in Europe Boris Ronaldo's resurgent after four years falling behind Lionel Messi. The reignition of this battle led both of them to continue with the fight for the title of the best player of all time to this very day, and so Neymar's turn kept being postponed until suddenly he was nearing his 30s and talking about retirement. Imagine if Ronaldo and Messi had slowly declined after 2014. Neymar, who finished below them in third place on two occasions, would now have two Ballon d'Ors to his name, the same as Ronaldinho. Had it not been for the injuries, he would also have won the Copa America in 2019, since Brazil managed to win it without him. Considering he has arguably a better club resume than Ronaldinho, it would just be a World Cup shy of beating him. But that is a lot of ifs and buts, in reality, Neymar will most likely retire with no World Cup, no Copa America, no Ballon d'Or and only one Champions League for which he was a top scorer, but only while tied in goals with both Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, and for which Messi won the Best Player Award. I'm the kind of person that just keeps on trying until all possibilities are exhausted, and I admire that. But putting myself in his shoes, why should he keep trying? Neymar clearly has many more interests besides football, and at the time, I'm not sure football is making him happy. So unless becoming the all-time great we expected him to be is more important for him than being happy, which I have a hunch it isn't, why should he keep on trying? And even if he does want to keep on trying, is there any hope? You could say that there isn't, that if he failed to reach his goals before the age of 30, it won't be after that he will make it, that players like Mbappé and Haaland will be there for the long run and will always outdo him, but well, think about it for a second. Remember when I talked about Ronaldo's unexpected rise in 2014? Well, it was unexpected because he was also 29. You know, every other Brazilian player except perhaps Zico and his teammates managed to win an international tournament. Most of them even won the World Cup. For Neymar to not win anything would be catastrophic for his legacy in Brazil. So just like I was saying, take something from Ronaldo and Messi and keep pushing. Messi finally won the Copa America at 34 years of age and Ronaldo won the Euros at 31 and the Nations League at 34. Before the age of 30, Ronaldo had 52 goals for the Portuguese national team, but somehow, after the age of 30, he has already scored 60. It's never too late. I know Neymar will never watch this, but if I had some advice for him, it would be to surround himself with people he knows he can trust, to just look around and see that the entire Brazilian national team is coming out to support him, to leave out social media, to focus on his fitness as hard as he can and to make the most of these final years. You only live one life, but you also only get one career. So yeah, this was my opinion on the whole subject of Neymar supposedly retiring. I know it was kind of a different video, but if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel so, so much. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.